no saben a quién invité el día de hoy. Yo no sé si ustedes, al igual que yo, son súper fans de un programa eh, que existe en, eh, en la televisión gringa, que es E! Entertainment Television, que se llama Botched, que aparte ya es, estrenaron ahorita la octava temporada. Y claro que yo llevo los últimos años viendo a Terry Dubrow y a Paul Nassif componiendo los horrores de cirugía plástica que he visto. Dije, oigan, es perfecto momento invitar a Terry Dubrow, que como ustedes saben, eh, pues es un muy importante cirujano plástico en California, que se han hecho súper famosos por este programa que se llama Botched. ¿Y cómo se traducirá Botched en español? Have you any idea, Terry, how do you say botched in Spanish? Because we're trying to figure that out. Can I curse? Yes, you can. Jodido. Eso. Me encanta. Me encanta. You know what? So I don't know if you're talking to the best person to talk to this about or the worst. I can't even do Botox. That's how freaked out I am about plastic surgery. You should be freaked out about plastic surgery because, I mean... Let's be honest. Have you ever looked at one of those consent forms for even something simple as, as Botox? That's what makes botched so great. I mean, it's so real and it's a cautionary tale. And we show people how badly it can go. That isn't to say it always goes wrong, but you really have to be careful about the plastic surgeon you choose, the procedure you have. And you really want to make sure you understand whether the benefits are worth it and whether, whether the risks outweigh the benefits or not. What you said right now is exactly what I've always thought. When the risks outweigh, okay, your desire. So the benefits, yeah, the yeah. benefits. So how do you know if you're there? Because I think I'm not there yet. Well, I will tell you something, you know, there are two reasons to do plastic surgery. One is for cosmetic benefits and one is for a functional benefit. One of the operations that has both of those is a breast reduction. Yeah. If a person has very large breasts and it affects them functionally, physically, they get pain in the neck, they get arm difficulties, they get the bra strap grooving or rashes. That's one of the best operations in plastic surgery. In fact, that's one of my favorite operations because it makes such an, an impactful change on a person who's having those problems, both cosmetically and physically. And it's, it's, I think, if not the best, one of the best operations in plastic surgery. And if you have physical problems from having very large breasts, I wouldn't I, go to a good surgeon. That's an operation, in my view, where the benefits way outweigh the risks, and it's not that risky an operation. So it's a good one. Okay, now let's go back to your opinion because you've seen so much botchedness on botched. What is the riskiest procedure that you would never do or you would never have done on anybody you love? Brazilian buttock lift, where you take fat from one part of the body and you inject it into the buttock. That is the most fatal procedure in plastic surgery. Why? There are big veins in the buttock that connect right to the main vein that goes back to your heart. And if you inject fat in there and it gets stuck in the main vein going to your heart and, and goes to your lungs, that's deadly. So of all the operations we do in plastic surgery, It's the most fatal. In fact, it's one of the most fatal operations, even when you're doing surgery to treat a disease. No voy a decir nombres, pero todas estas celebrities que vemos con unas nalgas del infierno y con unas caderas que tienen como, como una proporción entre la cadera y la cintura muy marcada, estas son inyecciones de grasa. Por eso de repente se hacen hasta rayos X y no ves implantes, claro, porque no son implantes porque es grasa. Y hay muchos doctores que peligrosamente lo siguen haciendo. I want to know, what is the biggest mistake patients make regarding plastic surgery? Okay, so there are a couple big, big ticket items, big mistakes. Number one is they 
go overboard. They either do their breasts too big, they put too much fat in their body, they make the nose too small, they just have it done too aggressively. That's a big mistake. And, and you would think that the surgeon would not allow them to do that. But you know what? Plastic surgery is a business. So if you go into a typical plastic surgeon's office, you know, they'll do what you want a lot of times. That's number one. Number two, you, you pick a surgeon based on price. And many times the cheaper the surgery, the less expensive the surgery, the less training and the less experience the surgeon has. And if a surgeon's calling himself a cosmetic surgeon, that may mean that they really aren't trained in plastic surgery because generally you can't, in most countries, call yourself a plastic surgeon unless you really have had years of experience in plastic surgery. You've taken the test to become certified in plastic surgery and hospitals will allow you to do the plastic surgery that you want to do. Whereas if you're a cosmetic surgeon, last week you may have been a general surgeon or a urologist or an anesthesiologist who took a weekend course. So the big mistakes are going to the wrong kind of doctor, pushing the doctor too far to make changes that are too aggressive or inappropriate, and not considering the risks you've really got to consider the risks because sometimes even when it's done by the best surgeon on the perfect patient you still can have a complication that can be very very scary one more question before i let you go so uh, what are we seeing on season eight botched so season eight is different than all the other seasons you know the first seven seasons we get sent all these patients and to to make it on the bot you have to have a very difficult problem that's very dramatic and people have tried to fix it and it failed and the risks are very high but some of the cases are so risky and so severe that we felt that we the benefits the risks were too high of a failure we now after seven seasons of doing botched you know, it's the practice of plastic surgery. You get good at what you do all the time. So we took all those cases that we passed on before. We brought them on botched and we did them. And so this is a much riskier season. We had some complications of our own that we had to fix. Um, but the results are much more dramatic than ever before. And the transformations are just really, really significant. So most difficult season we've ever had, the riskiest with the best, best transformations. And this season has a lot of heart in it and a lot of emotions. And um, there's even a lot of humor. This is, this is the best season we've ever had. Which is something I've always thought. One thing is being technically very good as a surgeon. And another thing is having your same perfect, uh, perception of what beauty and symmetry and lovely is and it's two different things yeah it really is i mean you can be very good technically but your idea your taste and concept your taste i mean i i know a plastic surgeon who's really quite gifted at plastic surgery but his patients all look exactly the same and it looks like they fell out of the plastic surgery tree and hit every branch on the way down, you know? So. <laughs> That's something you have to pay attention to. And also, yeah. is it is it the best idea just to see what that surgeon has done? The problem with that is you, every plastic surgeon has their before and after books, right? That they show patients, but they're not really showing you necessarily the problems they've had. They're just showing you the best results they've had. And sometimes they just pick very pretty people and pretty people always look like they've had good plastic surgery, yeah. but you, you, it's, it's talk to their nurses, talk to the, maybe look at their before and afters, look at their website and try to get an overall picture for their style and their taste. But it's, 
I mean, my style is I don't like to see any evidence that you've had plastic surgery. I don't want to see very big lips or giant breasts or the face too tight. I, I, I like to preserve people's sort of natural looks, just make it better. But um, other plastic surgeons want to change them into what their aesthetic is and, and a very altered looking person. I am so glad, by the way, before I let you go, that you're well. Um, I know that you had a scare. Um, yeah. I don't know if you want to share it or not, but we're yeah, very yeah, happy that yeah, you're I good. do. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I had you know a little mini stroke called a TIA, as you probably are aware. And fortunately, in my case, that I did it, I had it in front of my wife, who demanded that I go to the hospital immediately. And it turned out I had a hole in my heart. And had I not gone to the hospital immediately and been treated, a much larger little blood clot could have passed through from the right side to the left side of my heart to my brain and given me a disabling stroke. Because 20% of people will have a disabling stroke within a month of having a TIA and 90% of those have it within 48 hours. So um, it's, you know, my wife saved my life. And fortunately for me, I had something that was fixable so that I'm not at risk for having a stroke anymore. So I got very lucky and I have a very great wife and I'm very indebted to her for that. And the message is, is that if you're around someone who's having, it's called fast, facial drooping, arm numbness, speech problems, time, F-A-S-T, call 911 right away because you may only have three and a half hours to dissolve the clot that's blocking the artery in your brain that's giving you that stroke. So. Amazing. Uh, call 911 if you're, yeah. So thank you very much. I send you a big kiss. The best of luck with season eight. Botched. Y eso está en E.E. Entertainment Television para que no se lo pierdan. El lunes 25 de septiembre se estrena en Latinoamérica, 11 de la noche. A big kiss to you. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. That was so much fun. Thank you. Bye-bye.